It's a compliment to you and to the millions of people, now the multi-millions of people like you who have read these books, numbering now in the many millions, in 34 languages around the world. And the compliment to you is that I see that now humanity as represented in you is open to at least exploring a heretofore unexplorable question. That is, a question that most human beings shy away from. Is it possible that there's something more to understand about this experience called God and life? Is it possible that there's something we don't understand about God and about life? <coughs> the understanding of which would change everything. And is it possible that that which we do not fully understand has to do with the basic question that is asked in the heart and soul of every living being? Who am I really? And what am I doing here? And is it possible, just possible, that our already in place <coughs> beliefs and religions have answered the question in an incomplete fashion. That is, they don't have it all understood. Is it possible that even with the wondrous treasures that our world's religions have brought us, and the incredible insights to be found in their holy scriptures and their writings, that maybe, just maybe, some of what they have written and said and taught us may not be totally accurate or completely understood. And if that is possible, what's the missing data that would change everything? If we don't ask ourselves that question in this day and time, that is, if humanity as a whole does not address that issue right now, before too much more time goes by, too much more time may not go by. Before the human species completely restructures its collective experience of life itself in such a way that life as we know it becomes a thing of the past. Because now humanity has in its hands, at its fingertips, the technologies to change and alter life as we know it irrevocably. Years ago that wasn't true. We could do damage here or damage there and cause great disruption, but by and large, life as we know it would go on. Yet these days, in this day and time, we have the technology to do more than disrupt. We have the technology to utterly destroy everything overnight. And I don't mean simply with weapons of mass destruction as we conventionally understand them. I mean with weapons of mass destruction as we need to begin to understand them, for hunger too is a weapon of mass destruction. Oppression too is a weapon of mass destruction. Prejudice too is a weapon of mass destruction. Anger is a weapon of mass destruction. Misunderstanding is a weapon of mass destruction. Despair, poverty, is a weapon of mass destruction. In that it destroys the human spirit. And when the human spirit is destroyed, human beings whose spirit has been destroyed start destroying human bodies around them. <coughs> they get into airplanes and fly jetliners into skyscrapers thinking nothing of it. 
Well, they get into other airplanes and drop bombs on major population centers using weapons of mass destruction in order to find weapons of mass destruction and not seeing any contradiction at all. It's rather like using the death penalty to stop people from killing each other and failing to see the contradiction at all. Only a primitive society could engage in such contradiction and not see it. Only a species which simply doesn't understand who we are and why we are here. If you enjoy what you've just seen, consider making a donation so that you could have even greater access to more downloadable media and other content as well. Or visit our store and check out our calendar as well.